So Kyle, what do you do when your combat's just feeling a little repetitive? You hack, you slash, you kill the monster, and then you move on to the next one. How do you keep it exciting for the players? It's tough, but I have some ideas. Because <laughs> we got the video for you. That's what we're talking about in this entire little Hexplorers video, alternative goals in combat. The main thing here is we're going to break down four specific combat types, four specific goals that we want you to steal and put in your game because it's a it's a great way to make it fun for your players who maybe are getting a little tired of the monster of the week kill and move on. Absolutely. But also want to highlight that there's nothing wrong with fighting monsters. It's great. I love it. Uh, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with having a big stack of hit points that the players just whittle down. Uh, however, this is just a way to shake things up and a way to implement some different kind of goals in a different way to end combat rather than just smashing away 500 hit points. It's Kyle, I know you've talked about it with us. So in our game, the wild cards, it's linked on the channel. You can check it out. We're a party of <laughs> all of us are multi-class. Five of us are multi-class. <laughs> One is not. And it makes it challenging for you to get that mix of the CR monster right. So you're not either giving us something that's easy or something that's going to absolutely destroy us. It, it, it's been a it's been a work in progress over time and realistically like we have a whole other video on on trying to balance combats on the fly uh but that can be in itself a challenge um but as things have gotten a higher level you can start throwing a little bit more challenging encounters at you guys which is super fun but it can be grueling and just kind of boring to keep doing the same thing over and over again just to keep hitting with slightly different abilities slightly different resistances what if we try and implement some different ways that you guys can solve problems at higher levels, that you can literally solve problems uh, in combat that is not just kill the thing. Mm -hmm. That's way more interesting for both me and I think for you guys. Yeah, we should say off the top, Kyle, you're the DM of our game. You've DM'd over 130 of our wild cards campaign <laughs> stuff. And as a player, I've DM'd like uh, once or twice, but it scared me too much. So now I, I just play and make the funny make em ups. Um, but from a player perspective, I know doing combat as a brand new player, that's really fun and exciting because you're learning a new class potentially, you're learning how that magic goes, how you act in combat. But as you mentioned, we're now a level 17 level party. And so everyone kind of knows their role. Everyone kind of knows their spells, what they like to rely on. So how can you keep that exciting and original? Um, and here's how, let's just dive into it. Mm -hmm. Numero uh uno, Kyle, hit it. First one um, is is utilizing the puzzle in combat, or at least in amongst combat. Um, it's super fun to use puzzles, I think, in game. I know some people can find them that they, they bog them down, um, bog combat down, but if you use it in conjunction with your combat, that is where you can really shine. You can still get the puzzle out and, and however you want to use it. Uh, we'll have an example in, in just a short time. Uh, but it's something that once you roll initiative, the players just kind of innately, once initiative is rolled, think combat, they think fight. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of positing if you continue using initiative, continue the initiative roll. However, as the combat is initiated or just before you kind of begin uh, instilling this idea that there's more to the environment, there's more to the moment than just the monster in the middle of the room. Uh, it's a challenge that once complete is an alternative way to end an otherwise really, really challenging combat or potentially even a, a challenging combat and uh, a lair that is potentially deadly in itself. Yeah, and you do a really good job of that. And I wish I paid more attention in those comments to actually know how you're slowly trickling out this information. But you do a good job of slowly letting the party know, hey, this might not be a fight that you can win just by hacking and slashing, or at least raising the stakes to know this would be really hard to just straight up you 1v1ing or the party 1v1ing this monster. So whether that's tossing an insight check, hey, make an insight check, and they recognize even though you're doing damage, this thing does not look hurt. And letting them get those clues that there might be something else going on is a really good example. Kyle, I would love for you to, to peel back the curtain because I think of our Sphinx example in particular when we were in the Abyss. So this was pre-stream, so unfortunately we don't have the video proof of it. Um, and realistically, <laughs> the, the video proof of it is I stole it from Critical Role. Oh, great. Uh, it, in, in campaign one of Critical Role, uh, the, the the party, the Vox Machina, goes up in, there's, in search of one of the relics, uh, one of the, uh, the vestiges, and they have to basically 
solve what this sphinx's name is while fighting the sphinx matt did it with with the, the four elemental planes there was a whole uh, each elemental plane was was you could get through a portal and there was a thing you could read that to kind of make the the name up mine i did much simpler of just like the it was written on the pillars in uh the kind of lair that he was uh bound in uh and using skill checks to manage to find the riddles that were uh, inscribed and etched into these pillars, uh, using different skill checks to be able to like kind of get up in the area to see, to investigate, to kind of clear off the, the riddle so you could see it. So then there were four riddles that would ultimately provide the answer to kind of piece together the name. And once you had the name, the letters all spelled out, you shouted out his name. And ultimately what we did was shout out seven different combinations of those letters before <laughs> finally true. before finally nailing nailing the, his name. And it, it was uh, the way it was, the, the Sphinx was kind of corrupted by this abyssal presence by saying his true name. It kind of quelled that corruption and brought forth the celestial uh, lion Sphinx creature uh, who then had like an actual RP, like conversation. Uh, and you're able to kind of move forward in the dungeon. Keep in mind, you're still fighting the thing. Like Kyle mentioned, all yeah. of these initiative is still ticking away. So someone needs to be hacking and trying to keep that thing busy while the other ones are making skill checks. And that makes it fun for the party because you're trying to figure out, okay, what do I do with my turn here? Do, do I try and help that person out? Or I know I could end combat if we just solve this riddle. Um, some examples, just like Kyle mentioned, maybe it's a monster or a player that's being mind controlled, but they can talk to the party. They can give hints. Oh, please do this. I, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I can't stop. And maybe the um, reward is like you mentioned, uh, it takes away a curse or it opens a door or it banishes mm -hmm. all the like the phantoms or wraiths that are attacking the party. There's a lot of ways you can use the the lair, the environment to be the kind of solve. So the doors lock on either side and there's no way you can get through. You could try and smash through physically, but it's gonna take like, once they do it once, that's when you give the clue of like, this door is it's heavily reinforced. You can tell you hit it really, really, really hard and it barely dented. Mm -hmm. So they know immediately, okay, no more time to, to keep <laughs> smashing this. Let's try and solve it another way. Uh, and so whatever is this puzzle or riddles that you wanna implement into your game, it could be simply as open the door, banishing the evil presence, dispelling a curse, uh, all of these things. Ways to make your players think in, in uh, think outside the box, think outside of just the combat stats. Use their other skills, use out of the box thinking, try something new and just kind of get them to start thinking a little bit more in combat, but still giving the players who want to smash the thing, give them a place to smash the thing. It's a puzzle, main takeaway, encourages your players to use skill checks into, instead of damage. Very, very fun. Number two, something else we've done in our campaign, the classic, keep them safe. Keep yeah. that very weak NPC safe. <laughs> this can be a tough one to balance, but if it's done right, and if the players are successful, it can be really rewarding. Uh, and very simply, it is uh, having your party either literally hired to like guard and protect a group or by happenstance, uh, a, a, a combat encounter breaks out and there are civilians or innocent lives kind of at risk here. Uh, and it's pretty straightforward. You don't want them to get hurt or die. So your party then has to start thinking, okay, well, sure, we can keep the focus forward. But as the DM, you know, your monsters are smart unless they're certain monsters are not, but most monsters are smart enough to say, do I fight the big scary guy with the great ax or do I dive on the small child or the woman who's running away wearing no armor or any protection? Very easy choice for a monster to make that they're gonna wanna go for the easy target. That makes your party have to think differently in how they position themselves, how they use their abilities, using control effects to lock these monsters down, trying to draw aggro and draw, draw their focus of the monsters to them. And it still ultimately is just straight combat, but it's how you position yourselves and how you use your spells and abilities in a protective sense than a straight offensive sense. The one I think of is on our game and it is on stream, so we'll link it down below the specific time code. But it was us as a very high level party helping a caravan get through the desert and it's attacked by gnolls. And it was so fun because it became pretty apparent right away, we are kicking the asses of these gnolls, but they are targeting these innocent poor people. So we got to figure out 
How can we protect them? How can we end this encounter without using these area effect spells? Think about friendly fire when this is going down exactly. and add that tension to your players uh, to make it that much more exciting. Main takeaway of this one, Kyle, encourages players to get creative, whether it's items, spells, abilities, be protective rather than offensive. Exactly. Numero three, I love this one. So fun. The heist or getaway. Uh, or a little bit of both. In, in many <laughs> cases, the heist that goes wrong and has to become a getaway. Yep. Um, it is very obvious, very simple, been done a million times, however, something to consider in any of your games. Heist and getaway, get in, get the MacGuffin, get whatever of the artifact, the item, the thing, the person is, and then get the fuck out. Uh, very recently, we did this in, my, in our game uh, in a very, very challenging way that <laughs> was to me important for the moment. So to break it down, uh, our players have been searching for these relics of the fates form, very similar to the vestiges of critical role, these high level God killing, God powered items, artifacts in the world. Uh, they need them to accomplish their goals for the end campaign. Uh, and one or two in this case happened to be swallowed by a Kraken uh, and in the Kraken's lair in the middle of a terrible situation deep underwater uh, in this Kraken's lair. Out of the gate, even from the DM side, I'm saying this is a highly deadly challenge. Yes. Very obviously. It's the Kraken. You keep your eyes trained on the ravenous Ma just watching over the city. And you can just kind of hear this rolling guttural. It almost sounds like a chuckle, but like if a mountain will laugh. And after another hour, two hours, it slips beneath. And that light kind of dissipates. The tentacles just pull back. And it rises up. And you just feel it shifting up and over the city. You watch and lose sight of it. As it just pulls the tide alongside. Everyone is awoken once more. As Mary, your watch would end. What do you pass it on to? There's, you know, that that's it. That's all I have to say. Like one of the top CR creatures in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, so out of the gate, kind of prefacing that you can try and fight this thing to the death, but it is going to be the hardest fight of your lives. It's probably not going to go well. <laughs> probably not. People are going to die. Yeah. So prefacing that, Alternative thinking is key here. And ultimately, you guys had a chance to really plan this out really thoroughly and really try and uh, think outside the box, think of a heist, get in, get the, the relics, and get away. Less than kill the monster, survive, and get away. So uh, it, was, it was really interesting to present it in a way that like you got to kind of do a setup focus the attention, draw it out of the lair, get in, and there were multiple checks, multiple different things you were using, multiple abilities, uh, and really creative thinking, using your Goes wrong right economy. away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, everything goes wrong immediately. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really trying to get you to think, stop using your, that small combat box in the and Beyond or in your character sheet and of just your weapons and armor, focus on the other things and think outside of your character sheet. Then put yourself in the scenario, what is it you're doing? And how do we do this? How do we accomplish yeah. this? We had a stakeout. We literally came down, had a stakeout, tried to get more information, tried to figure out where exactly things were, had to work out plans. Okay, if this exit plan fails, what do we do? If we have to leave separately, who goes with who? Okay, that means who needs this item? That means if this doesn't work or this person goes unconscious, what's the plan from there? Um, yeah. Also it was prep scary. time in yeah. needing to uh, get potions and scrolls of water breathing to be underwater for a significant amount of time. <laughs> Items to give yourself swim speed so you weren't swimming at a half speed and unable to attack. Uh, the allocation of who had certain items of ma that you've, you've acquired over the campaign, not necessarily acquired for this, but who had them became ultimately the defining moments of who had certain items and who could use certain spells and items change the flow of, of this combat to you didn't lose two of your members or three members or everybody, everyone, you know. Man, 
Yeah, it was yeah. a challenge. So consider this is a very high level, high level option for this heist and getaway example. But consider putting a very challenging threat where killing it is almost not an option. Could be if everything goes really well, but probably not an option. But give them the give your players the chance to prepare the heist prepare the options to get away and really think creatively of how they can do those two elements and everything in between. And just like Kyle mentioned, uh, some of this setup was out of combat, but then in combat, it's going down. Now add levels to it. Think of it like the, the bank scenario where you're doing a heist for a bank. And at first, trying to keep everyone busy, you know, and then you're trying to break into the bank vault. Oh, now the cops are coming here. Now the cops are at the back door. Think of it like that, adding these multiple tiers to build up the tension of when do you guys have to go? And then it's too late. If you don't leave in this initiative account, you're probably screwed. Yeah. Yeah. I'll always, uh, the, the element of the heist and getaway is always raising the stakes. So in the beginning of this, you guys were, were lucky enough to have the crack and leave the lair. The lair was free sort of. You got inside and realized there's still some threats here, but they're manageable threats. You have to find the thing in this case. It wasn't just kind of sitting on a plinth. It wasn't op It wasn't open. So they had to use actions to search and hunt for the thing. They had to survive and try and keep the, uh, the other monsters in the lair docile and make sure that they weren't going to alert the big crowd. Not make too much noise. Yeah. Make too much noise. Then ultimately, as some of the checks fail and some as, as things are rolling through, it's not, it's in initiative, but it's not necessarily combat initiative. And then ultimately, the bell rings, the Kraken is alerted, the alarm goes off, and now it's a race against time. Okay, we got to get the thing. You keep going through the, the motions to get the thing, but now you raise the stakes again, the Kraken arrives. You're big bad, your army is flowing in, the guards have been alerted, the Kraken descends, and you still are only one of two items in hand. Now it's, okay, where's the other item? Well, it's inside the Kraken. <laughs> that might be a big jump for for raising the stakes, but use it at, you know at your discretion. Um, and then it was acquire that however you could, and, and then the getaway in our case was thankfully a teleport or plane shift, but it didn't matter. Um, it was a it was a Did one shot. I don't know if it worked, so you have to watch that episode. We'll find out. <laughs> that well, leads us very well nicely into uh, speaking of. The time ticking away, tick, 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 getting closer to midnight. The last one is a survival time clock challenge. The That's AKA right. just don't die. That's right. <laughs> Wait it out, try and survive. Exactly. Uh, it's, it's very simple. Um, again, very simple, but it is how you do it that is, yes. that is clutch. Um, it could be, it can be challenging to pull off from a DM's perspective, especially for newer DMs as you're trying to figure out that balancing of the CR. Uh, I, it's much easier, I admit, as you guys have gotten to higher levels. Mm -hmm. uh, more hit points means I don't have to worry so much. <laughs> and you have more abilities to kind of heal if, if you do get hurt. Um, you want to make sure you're party has some kind of healing capabilities if you're going to go down this survive time uh, clock. Pardon me. Um, but it's just the moment that you can throw the biggest, baddest thing you can think of, throw it in front of them, use the big, bad spells, uh, scare the crap out of your players, and then after a few rounds, or an early on, establish, this isn't going to last forever. You've got to survive until it's over. Speaking of uh, throwing the big bat, I'm going to drop right here our TikTok of what happens when the wild cards went up against TMO. I need Ali, Gord, and Valentine to make Fuck. dexterity saving throws. The Oof. red head just opens okay. wide and lets loose a blast of fire. 23. Fail. Oh, oh. 17. Fail. 23 is a fail. Fuck. You got 10? <laughs> fail. <laughs> You guys watched as this gout of flame erupts forward. It's bad. You each take <laughs> 88 points of fire damage. <gasps> what? Kyle. 88? We just got here. <laughs> I have one health. <laughs> oh, oh my, my God. God. <laughs> and that quickly let us know, uh, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> this is... This is not a fight if that little dragon can do that. In <laughs> that was like a legendary action too. I think it wasn't even like Tiamat's turn. It was, it was just yeah. 
oh my God, what do we do? We are going to die. How can we try and last this out? And I think, Kyle, that's the interesting part for the DM because, I mean, sure, you could just tell us, hey, by the way, um, this is a survive thing. Like, exactly. you guys aren't going to win this. But you don't, which adds to the tension. And it's how you give those breadcrumbs of, hey, you're not going to win this. So try and figure out other ways to survive. This, this is the same concept as the as the puzzle in terms mm -hmm. of how you want to kind of inform your players that there's more going on here. Uh, in this case, you're, this, the, both of these options for, for the puzzle and for the survival option, good opportunities to use passive perceptions, insights, investigations. Um, it gives you just a chance to quickly on someone's turn as they're rushing forward, they manage to spot that something is kind of fading. The, in this case of, of Tiamat, it was obvious that time was kind of shifting through and her body was kind of shifting along with it um, and decaying. And in that case, you're like, oh, okay, well, then that's not something we're doing. Something else is at play here. And that's just your first kind of hook, your first, your first clue that there's more going on. So you want to set almost at least one per round of combat that you want to have planned. Um, but if you can, for multiple multiple party members, give just little bits, little bits of information, little little breadcrumbs for them to kind of piece together that, okay, maybe it is not just kill the thing. It's this, it's survive. Maybe that means I'm going to use my turn instead here to just hide. I'm going to use, I'm going to take the dodge action. I'm going to hide behind this pillar. I'm going to just do something, a, a, a buff or, a, or an invisibility that I maybe otherwise wouldn't in such a crazy circumstance. Um, and just see how this plays out. Kyle, yeah, let's spitball here. I got some examples. Using any of these four, just coming up with just random examples parties could use. I got two right away for survival time clock. One could just be the vampires and the undead are attacking your group and you just know at sunrise you'll be okay, but you gotta last till sunrise. Um, another Absolutely. great one that's always fun is your sage wizard needs to be protected. You can combine the NPC thing because they're making Liaman's tiny hut. They're making a sanctuary for you but you got to survive these rounds until that spell is up and ready. They're almost there, but you got to keep people away from them. Absolutely. Uh, what else? I know you probably dreamt up a bunch of scenarios. Anything come to mind for you? We've had we've had a million one of each of these because I do try and make the alternative goals in combat a big thing, especially in the last the latter half of our games that I've put on stream. There's been a lot more of that kind of commitment to not just hit points. Um, trying to really make you guys think outside the box. And, and it's it's honestly an element of trying to eat up your action economy. Like mm -hmm. if you want to think of it from those terms, and that is sometimes how I do think about it is, okay, I can't continuously keep packing on hit points or more more creatures in here to just keep eating fireballs and getting stabbed. <laughs> like there's, there's five or six party members in, in our group who can deal a significant amount of output of damage and who can soak a pretty good amount. How can I make them do more on a turn that's not just deal damage? To make you want to protect a family member, to make you need to protect just an important NPC, that to me also engages those players who want uh, want more RP in, in a moment. They want to do something that fits their character more. They want to play the heroic character, not necessarily just the big damage dealer, but you can mm -hmm. still reward those damage dealers <laughs> with all of these. Yeah, exactly. There is there is an opportunity in every one of these for that person who loves that combat to go tank on whatever big bad is coming up against them. Absolutely. There's still that that's still a necessary component to all of these, but it gives the moment to to break away from that if you wanted to. Final thoughts here, Kyle. Um, sometimes you just want your players to hit something until it dies. And we'll have future yeah. videos about that, how to shake up those combats. But yeah, every once in a while, one of these encounters is really fun and refreshing for the party. And yeah, and it's it's a great opportunity, like uh, I've kind of kept saying, is to try and engage your players in other ways than just using their, their combat stats, trying to make people think outside the box, uh, try and be use creative and weird ideas, kind of off the wall thinking. And when they do, you really want to try and, and reward that and, and engage with that. Yeah. If it doesn't make perfect sense, try and make it as close to possible as you can. 
you know, it, Hondo throws out wild suggestions all the time <laughs> that make no sense. However, I'll use the core of it and I'll try and shape it of like, okay, well, your wall of water isn't going to stop this, you know, path going through here. However, given the conditions, it will freeze a little bit. It'll slow people down a little bit. It'll do, it'll put out some element of fire in this area. Like try and work with how, with your players, work with the, the concept that they're trying to kick off as you're being flexible in your encounter design as well. Yeah, and I mean, that's what the DM screen is for, whether it's actually on the table or through the digital thing. Listen, if your party for some reason is really focused on one thing, like <laughs> for some reason they just love those lamps you first narrated when they entered the space and they think the key to it is somehow lighting those lamps, hell, sure, fine. That sure. could be the solution. The key is to just keep that tension up and to just be as flexible uh, and make it as exciting as possible. Yeah, exactly. And you let your players show off, let them be smart, let them be creative. And it's gonna make your combats more interesting. Even after, once you do it the first time, then some of your players are gonna be starting to think, okay, well, maybe this is in the next combat, even if you don't have it intended. Or maybe there's a little bit more here. Maybe I can do this. Maybe maybe if I touch this over here or I shift this, if I light this, exactly. Like you're just trying to make people think a little bit more than just attack. Like Kyle mentioned uh, halfway through this video, we got a bunch of these kind of talks. We got ones about uh, multi-class characters, how to balance combat out. We mentioned role play before. We got tons of videos on role play, how to role play a bit better, how to get that character who maybe really wants to get into role play but is feeling a little shy, how to coax them out of their shell. Uh, and we got what, plenty more of these coming up on the channel itself. We're gonna be talking about new players joining parties, how to welcome them in as a DM, how to welcome them in as a party, tons more of these videos. If you wanna catch up on crack and heist, on tr trying to survive null raids uh yeah. the wild cards kyle where can they find them uh, you can find us right here every tuesday we have a new episode up uh if you're interested in just audio versions we have a podcast version of all the episodes as well wherever you get your podcasts and we're we're gearing up towards the end of our campaign so things are starting to get spicy and uh kyle we wouldn't have a campaign two already planned and, and ready to rock for 2022 would we could certainly be in the works for the last <laughs> year plus <laughs> That I've been world building and ready. <laughs> well, stay tuned for that. That's all for this video. As we like to say as explorers, uh, just keep exploring out there. Have fun, be nice to your party, and stay safe. <laughs>